Hi there Coachman owners. Today on your 2015 Coachman Murata, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's rear anti-sway bar. And this is what our sway bar looks like when it's installed. The Roadmaster rear sway bar is designed to work in conjunction with your factory sway bar. This is our factory sway bar located here just on the other side of the axle. You can kind of see it dipping down just a little bit right here. What's great about this kit is that we get to keep all the benefits that the factory sway bar gives us, but we get to add additional anti-sway onto it by putting another bar here just behind the axle. Roadmaster's done a great job in engineering this, allowing it to integrate seamlessly into your motorhome here. They do have a couple of different versions of this kit, so make sure you're paying attention to the part number, because um, this F53 chassis motorhomes like the Coachman Murata here they do come in different weight ratings. A lot of options can change, which is the appropriate bar for your vehicle. So just make sure you're double checking your vehicle weight um, when you're looking at these bars. And then also I would recommend hopping down here and just give a quick peek at your components down here because the shock mounting can be slightly different um, depending on that weights and on your F53 chassis. So just take a look at that. Um, they can't, there are some subtle variations. This one here bounced directly to the shock. Uh, attachment point here at the bottom just under our axle and it makes it extremely easy to install being able to just attach our components to existing holes that are already located on the vehicle. There's no drilling required to get this installed which is really nice um, and we also don't have to take out our U-bolts to install this one on your heavier motorhomes that are over 22,000 pounds and the Coachman Murata here could potentially be in that category so you've got to do double check your weights um, with those bigger ones you actually have to remove the u-bolts here and install a plate on the bottom and those ones are quite a bit more of a challenge to install but that is all Roadmaster then it all integrates again into all this stuff um, but if you want to follow along with us here we'll show you how to get this guy on and it is very easy. The main purpose of upgrading your sway bar to the Roadmaster one here and adding it to the back is because you're combating sway issues on your motorhome and that might be if you're, you're driving down the road whenever you turn your cabinets open up they slam uh, a vehicle like a semi passes by in a heavy crosswind and it just really throws your motorhome maybe almost like to the point where you're having to compensate from moving over to another lane that's where these really come in handy because uh, they're going to help keep your vehicle upright they're going to minimize the sway that you have and the way it does this is by the bar that we've got here. And if we look at the bar, it is installed, clamped here under the bottom of our axle. And then we've got links here that attach to the frame. So our axle, when we're sitting on the road, driving down the road, whatever, our wheels are gonna be planted firmly on the ground. But our vehicles, supported by our suspension system. So it can pivot and move around as it needs to to transfer um, all these various road uh, impurities and stuff that's out there that you're running into from not transferring directly to you in the cab. It absorbs a lot of that. But that movement that we've got there, that's where you get your sway. We're trying to absorb a lot of these road impacts to have a nice smooth ride, but now we've got a little bit of looseness in our vehicle. So we put sway bars on it. They come from the factory to help prevent any kind of sway, but once you get as much weight as a lot of these motorhomes have, um, they need some additional assistance, and that's where the Roadmaster bar comes in here. So for example, if we have a semi that comes by with a heavy crosswind, and our motorhome was upright, they drive by, and now all of a sudden our motorhome tilts to the left. Well, what happens when the motorhome tilts to the left? Our axle's still flat on the ground here, but the motorhome's tilting. So when it tilts to the left, that means that this frame on this side is coming down and getting closer to our axle here. But on the opposite side, it's actually lifting up slightly. The frame is going further away from our axle a little bit. And what that does is it pushes down through this here, pushes down on our our bar and on this side it lifts up and we're actually twisting our sway bar at that point pushing down pushing up and our bar doesn't want to twist it wants to remain in this natural state that it's in here so it's going to spring itself back and pull our motorhome back up right minimizing the amount of sway that we would have left and right and also minimizing how much back and forth movement we get because on those looser suspension systems it might sway to the left and then when it comes back to the right momentum is still there so we go beyond center and it kind of does that until it eventually settles out this is gonna reduce how many back and forths you get and minimize uh, sway altogether. 
Now with these big beasts like this, they can be quite a bit to tame. So in addition to a rear sway bar here from Roadmaster, I'd also recommend upgrading your front sway bar with a Roadmaster one. That is gonna be a replacement for your factory one. You're gonna get a heavier duty sway bar up there to help combat sway. And then an additional component, not from Roadmaster, um, but we carry them here at E-Trailer is Sumo Springs, and they work great in conjunction with these Roadmaster sway bars to help combat sway and just make your overall motorhome ride a lot better. You can get those for both the front and rear axle as well, and then if you want the ultimate motorhome driving experiment, experience, I would recommend also throwing on a Roadmaster steering stabilizer. And what that does is it helps keep your steering wheel straight for you and absorb road impacts. When you hit those potholes and stuff, your wheel's not jarring as much as it used to, and it helps pull it back straight so you're not the only one putting all the effort in, keeping you going straight down the road. So now that we've kind of covered this here, we're, uh, we're gonna go out on our test course and see it in action. So now we're gonna hit our test course here and see how it feels. It was very rocky before uh, just coming over the test course, trying to pull the thing into the shop. Boy, it would really throw us back and forth. So we're coming into our uneven bump section here and we do still got some rocking going on. This, this beast here, I really think could utilize the full suite of suspension upgrades because of how rocky it is. But I can feel that there is a reduction. You know, it's minimized how much we are rocking here. Because before, you can hear our uh, like the blinds kind of hitting over there and stuff. They're not hitting with near the intensity that they were before. But it is still fairly rocky. We do still got some uh, some side to side sway. Um, it does seem to be less. We're now coming into our even bump section, and this is going to simulate like hitting a um, uh, a speed bump or pulling in and out of a driveway. Now this doesn't really change too much with your sway bar. We're hitting it here a little bit unevenly, so that way we're getting some rocking, but if you hit them dead on, it doesn't really affect uh, your suspension. It's really just your side to side is what our sway bars affect. So now we're gonna get into the slalom section where we're gonna mimic an evasive maneuver, and it is kind of a wet day today, so we are gonna be taking it a little slower than we normally do here. Not quite as aggressive. And we're gonna get up to that section here. And this is usually where I notice a pretty big difference in our suspension enhancements is during the evasive maneuver test. Because uh, before when we, you know, you give it a good turn and it really throws you, we're gonna give it a similar turn right here, kind of as if we're getting out of the way of like a, a, a gator skin or something on the highway, highway like, a, like a tire came off a motorhome or something or a, a semi and we need to get out of the way. And we got a little, little speed going. So that way we can see how she feels. Again, it's a little wet, so we're not gonna be going too crazy with it. And this beast here already had some substantial sway. So I do feel like we're gonna have improvements, but I think this guy could really benefit from a full suite. So when we get into the section here, it does seem to be quite a bit better on our uh, evasive maneuver section. You know, when we rock it back and forth here, we still get a little bit of rattle out of our blinds there, but we're not throwing the body around nearly as much as we were. On the bumps course section, we were still getting thrown around quite a bit. So that's where I really feel like some sumo springs would help out um, in that area a lot. So if you're really battling um, issues with going over the bumps and sway, then this is gonna help but I really feel like Sumo Springs is probably gonna be a better option uh, for you. Again, they all work with one another, so you can stack those to get the best driving experience. Um, I, our customer here should notice a pretty big improvement. I imagine they'll probably take it on a trip or two, but I wouldn't be surprised if they come back for those Sumo Springs uh, to really bring this thing in line. We'll begin our installation here on the driver's side rear wheel. We gotta remove some bolts. Now to access these bolts, we do need to lift our motor home some because our leaf spring is gonna be right in the way where those bolts are. So we use the leveling jacks to lift the rear of our vehicle up. We've got some blocks we put on them to get a little extra height out of it. You can get those here at E-Trailer from Ultra Fab if you need some as well to give you a little bit more lift. You just need to lift it up enough to where the leaf spring clears the bolts and then put some jack stands underneath your frame to support it and make sure you chalk your front wheels as well. So we've got it already lifted up here so we can access those bolts. They're gonna be located right in the wheel well here. So we've got a 21 millimeter on a decent extension. And our bolts are located here. 
and there's one also located here. And you don't need to hold the nut on the other side because there's a little tab on the nut. And that was the nut falling off right there that you heard. Yeah, that little tab on the nut prevents it from uh, requiring a wrench. It'll prevent it from spinning. And then if the bolt comes out with it, that's fine. We're gonna be taking both those out so we can install our bracket in that same location. So here's our bracket. This is what's gonna install in the location where we just removed our bolts. So I got a bolt right here. You're gonna get two of these in your kit. They're not side specific, so just grab one of them. It's gonna fit just like this with the plate on the outside of the frame and then also underneath the frame. This is gonna line up with those bolt holes that we just removed those bolts from. Just line it up there and then slide your bolts through the frame. All right, so once we got those slid through, we're gonna put our nut on the other side. There's the nuts that were on the other side. There's the tab that I was telling you about that I'm holding it by. So I'm just gonna hold this up here and then I'm threading the bolt into the nut because you can't really spin the nut due to that tab. All right, we got it started on that one. Now I'm just gonna do the same thing with the other bolt here. All right, now we got both started. We can go ahead and zip those down. And then we can go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. So we've got our side brackets on. We can go ahead and prepare our sway bar now. That way when we roll underneath there, we'll have it ready for us. So this is our sway bar. And then this is the bushings that come in our kit. The bushings are split like this. So you can open them up so we can slide it on our sway bar. And this is the lubricant that comes in your kit for the inside of your bushing. So we're just gonna put this and apply it generously on the inside here. You may wanna wear gloves when doing this. There are some people that have indicated that they get irritation from the lubricant. Um, I've not noticed any. So I just got a napkin here ready, but um, if you have sensitive skin or anything like that, uh, you might wanna consider wearing gloves. So we're just gonna put this all the way around the inside. Nice thorough coat. Make sure all the way across on both sides. And then after we've got the inside lubricated up here, the little bit of excess that's on your finger, I like to just smear this on the outside of the bushing. We don't want a lot of lubricant here, but this little tiny bit can help reduce squeaks and noises from your sway bar. So we'll just put a little dab of that on there. This is gonna slide over the end of our sway bar. You can see the full span there. Just pull it open slide it on the end, and then if you want, you can go ahead and put the cap on there. Um, it's pretty common that these caps like to slide off, so you don't have to put it on now if you don't want to, because it may end up just falling off on you, uh, but it can help keep the bushing on there a little better. Now we're just gonna do the same thing with our other one for the other side here. All right, we've got both of those prepared there, so we can go ahead and grab the rest of our parts and bring everything underneath so we can get this installed under there now. So we're now underneath the vehicle, and right here at our shock, the mounting portion for our shock here at the bottom just underneath the axle this bracket here has some holes in the bottom of it and that's where our hardware is going to drop down so take the smaller bolts that come in your kit each one of these is going to get a washer on it and then you're just going to drop it down through that hole until it pokes out the bottom just like that there we'll grab our next one and we're going to put that in as well and there's actually an opening here on the side um, so if you need to, you can kind of feed it in this way, whichever is easier for you, uh, for getting it in there. And then we're going to do the same thing here on the other side as well, getting our bolts fed down through here. Those bushings that we just fed into place with those caps on it, those are what are going to attach to these bolts. All right, so we've got those fed down. I will go ahead and grab our sway bar so we can get it up in here. When we lift it into place, we've got washers and locking nuts here. So I'm just setting them right on top of the axle on each side, two per side. That way the hardware's right where I can access it easily. This bar is not light. And you may even consider getting an extra set of hands to help you lift this up because of how heavy it is. Now when we have this installed, 
we want it to be like this. We can see our Roadmaster sticker says Roadmaster, and if this was sitting level on the ground, this portion, our arms would be angled up off of the ground like this towards the rear. So yeah, we're just gonna lift straight up like this. And you can actually, you can let it hang down like this if you want for now. Sometimes it's easier to install it if you let the weight just kinda, kinda dangle. And then we can rotate it into position after we get it hang, hung up there. So we're just gonna lift it up. Try and line it up with the holes in your brackets. And we're gonna focus on just getting one side started and then we'll go over to the other side. So I'm gonna grab my nut. I'm going to grab my washer, we're going to get one side lined up on there, slide on our washer, and thread our nut into place there. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side for our other bolt that's dropping down over here. And yeah, if you can use your body to help prop it up that usually makes life easier for you there we go we got this side started so that'll make the other side a whole heck of a lot easier you may have to slide your bushing down and your sway bar down just a little bit on the bushings to get it to line up and then we can get it installed over on this side and if you actually push your bushing to the side that can put a little bit of pressure on your bolts and that'll just help keep the bolt from pushing up, uh, back up from where you dropped it down. All right, once we get them all loosely started on there, the sway bar will hang like that and we can grab our tools to tighten them down. You'll use an 11 16 for the nut and a 5 8 for the head of the bolt. You're more than likely gonna need uh, a combination of ratchets and wrenches to be able to get inside here to hold the bolt while tightening the nut. Then we can tighten them down. And we'll snug down our other side as well. We can then go back and torque those once we've got them snug down. So now we want our sway bar to sit relatively level when the suspension is loaded. So at this point, if you're still working with your vehicle lifted with your leveling jacks, you would wanna make sure you put your vehicle back down. We've got our vehicle down and we're lifting it with our lift here, but our lift is lifting it by the wheels, so our suspension is loaded. It's as if it's sitting on the ground. So we want it to be roughly level, and we're just gonna see which is the best mounting holes to utilize here to achieve that level. And it looks like if we go with the lowest hole on each, that's gonna give us a pretty level bar. Um, we'll see if we move up a hole, that's also fairly decent. Um, and then you have your other hole in the top bracket here you could utilize as well. This is kind of your options for achieving uh, level. It's looking like for us, it's gonna probably be best if we use the lower hole in the upper bracket that we installed and the middle hole on the three holes that are located here. So we can go ahead and get this mounted up here at this point. We'll do the same thing on the other side and we know which holes we're gonna be utilizing to make our attachments now. This is gonna use the larger bolts that come in your kit. So these guys here, we want the bolt to go from the outside towards the inside. So just hold it up there. Slide your bolt through, place your nut on the other side. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side here real quick, get that one mounted up. So now we're just pivoting our bar up, finding that point where it's level with the ground. And again, this looks like this is probably the best spot for this particular motor home. Each one varies slightly just based on weights and everything else that's in your vehicle. So that's why you get these multiple options here. So you can get the best setup for your particular motorhome. Cause they are, they do all have subtle differences between them. Even if you have the exact same year, make and model, there can be subtle differences that you have to account for. 
So now we can go back and tighten down our hardware. We're gonna use a 15 16 socket and wrench to do so. And then we'll head over to the other side and snug these down. And then we'll just go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's rear anti-sway bar on our 2015 Coachman Murata.